Thank you, Sam. Uh, you are a hero. I'm, I'm grateful um, and I'm humbled by your, your comments. And I very much appreciate you, uh, Chief Kirk, uh, coming up, coming up and uh, speaking between me and Chris Ann. So that that I appreciate. <laughs> I got a little break there. I really, uh, Councillor, uh, appreciated your remarks. Um, I'm going to start at the end. But by the way, let me just quote. Uh, Thomas Paine first, uh, in his, the very first sentence of his pamphlet, Common Sense, which caused pretty big stir back in 1775. Sheriff Denny Pyman, I haven't had a chance to say hi to you yet. God bless you, sir. Good to see you. It's good to be with all you folks, and I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, Thomas Paine, uh, a long habit of not thinking a thing to be wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right. The very first sentence of, of common sense, a long habit of not thinking a thing to be wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right. Well, we have some long bad habits in America, and I want to talk about one of them, and one of them, I'm gonna, as I say, I'm going to start at the end because I'm going to give you the fina final version of uh, what I want to talk about. Here's your takeaway for today, because this is something we've forgotten in America. We've forgotten what law is and what law isn't, and we need to recover that. When a peace officer refuses to enforce an unconstitutional act, the peace officer is not breaking the law. He is enforcing and upholding the law. This is the, this is the end of my talk, okay? So I'm just giving it to you at the beginning. I'm, I'm going to try to unpack this a little bit and make this case for you in the few minutes that I have. And But, but just in case I go over my time and get kicked off the stage here. I wanted to give you the end at the beginning. When a peace officer refuses to enforce an unconstitutional act, he's not breaking the law, but upholding the law. Okay. There is an American view of law and liberty and government. As a matter of fact, that's our website. We call our website the American View. We start it with a capital T because we say it's a proper noun. There is a particular American view. It is summarized, this is paraphrased from the Declaration, there is a God. Our rights come from him. This has been said by other speakers here and uh, reiterated. Law and rights are part of his creation, right? The purpose of civil government is not to make sure your seatbelt is buckled or you're wearing your helmet, and it's not to keep you safe in any other way, and it's not to redistribute wealth, by the way. It's not to take it from you because you obviously have money and give it to you because you obviously need it. And by the way, there's carrying charges along the way, aren't there? I need to, in order for, to be able to take it from you and give it to you, I really have to own it all, don't I? All right, so the purpose of civil government is not to do any of those things. The purpose, purpose of civil government, in the American view, in the Declaration, is to protect and defend God-given rights. And this is not just some fancy philosophical statement. This is the law. The Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Code calls the organic law of these United States. That is to say, and think about that for a minute, if it's the organic law of these United States, then anything that purports to be law must be in harmony with it. So things that are not in harmony with it can't be law, can they? Might look like law, might smell like law, you might get punished for disobeying it, but we have to stop calling things law which are not law and let me remind you what they said in the declaration this is a little word picture i use this is the declaration of independence printed on excuse me four pieces of paper color coded for your for your uh, entertainment the these three pages are, are yellow because they represent just a list of complaints 27 complaints against the king and parliament and uh, my my suggestion to you is that they would have been lost to history the whole document wouldn't be, would, wouldn't be remembered we wouldn't be talking about it today had it not been for this argument this american view they made on the first page because if this is just a list of complaints let me just ask you to think if you've got 27 complaints against the king but the king is the law he's the lawgiver there's no ultimate lawgiver above him he is the ultimate lawgiver then what does it matter how many complaints you have you can have 27, you can have 127, you can have 8 million and 27, you're up against the law. What they said on this page is that there's a lawgiver above the king that the king owes obedience to, and that makes these make sense. Otherwise, they would be unreasonable. But they make sense because there's a lawgiver above the king, and the king's not paying attention to that lawgiver. 
if you fast forward to today, what we're saying is there's a lawgiver above the Supreme Court. <gasps> there's a lawgiver above an executive order. <gasps> that those executive orders must be in harmony with in order to be law. As a matter of fact, in this list of complaints, you know what they call things like the Stamp Act, the Townsend Act, the T Act, what they call the Intolerable Acts? You know what they called those things? They didn't call them law. They didn't say, we, these things are not law. These things are, are bad law. They said these things are, and I want you to repeat this after me, these things are pretended legislation. They call them pretended legislation. One more time. Pretended legislation. Let's stop calling things like Obamacare law. Let's call them pretended legislation. That way we can properly think about them because, as my pastor likes to say, proper action follows proper thinking. Right action follows right thinking. Let's think right about these things. So, this question of which law do I follow really is not an accurate question. It's a, it's a trick question, if you will. It's a wrong-headed question. It's a no-conceived question. It was a question that, the, that in Sheriff Mack's case, the, 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 uh, the, the Supreme Court said he's forced to choose between the law and his oath. That's really not a right construction that they said about him because he wasn't choose, uh, forced to choose between the law and his oath because his oath was the law and the law was pretended legislation. Thank you. Okay, so what is law? Where does it come from? And is there a difference between law and an unconstitutional act? Well, once upon a time, the Supreme Court said there was. The Supreme Court said this, and I'm not quoting the Supreme Court because it's always right. I'm quoting the Supreme Court because it happened to be right this time. Okay? Because it does happen to be right sometimes. And it's in, in Norton v. Shelby County, the Supreme Court said this, an unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights, it imposes no duties, it affords no protection, it creates no office, it is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed, okay? So unconstitutional acts or pretended legislation are not law, and they are inoperable ab initio from the beginning. They're as inoperable as if they had never been passed. So you don't have to wait, do you, Sheriff Mack? You don't have to wait 18 years for, for, some, for, it to go through a, for judges to make up their minds and then change their minds and then change their minds again and then appeal and remand, et cetera, et cetera. You take an oath not to what a Supreme Court justice says or any judge said. You take an oath as a peace officer to the Constitution. You are held accountable for knowing what it says and what it means. You know what law is and what law isn't. And if you're not capable of doing that, then resign from the job. You need to be able to do that. That's your oath. You don't have to wait for a judge, as Sheriff Mack says, to say that it's okay for you to keep your oath. You don't have to do that. You are charged with that. That's the way, that's the, way the system is supposed to work. The Supreme Court, probably in the most famous Supreme Court case ever, Marbury versus Madison, reiterated this when they said all laws which are repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. Of course, I would substitute all pretended legislation which is repugnant because if it's, if it's repugnant to the Constitution, it can't be law. It is pretended legislation. Thank you. Well, here's where it comes from. The Declaration of Independence. He has combined with others, he being King George III, has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution. By the way, these 27 complaints, you'd be amazed how they're all the same complaints we'd have today. Failure to protect the borders is one of them. And not acknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. By the way, you know what they called things, you know what they called it when there was a violation of a pretended legislation? They called it pretended offenses. <laughs> they called them, that's, that's the document. I suggest we use that language. That's historic, and I would suggest it's very accurate. Pretended legislation. So it logically follows that it would be unlawful to enforce pretended legislation or to be, in any way, complicit in its enforcement. I'm talking to peace officers, right? So logically and legally, Local elected officials who are sworn to uphold the Constitution are duty-bound to protect the people under their care from those that would wrongly enforce that which is clearly not the law. Pretended legislation, by the way, is not only not the law, pretended legislation 
is a violation of the law. Now, briefly, Tom DeWeese, when he was up here yelling and screaming at you, gave, gave <laughs> no, Tom DeWeese gave a list of, of counties that had uh, gotten rid of Ickley, and the very first county was Carroll County, Maryland, which is a sister county to where I live. Richard Rothschild here, Car 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 one of the Carroll County commissioners, was, was responsible for uh, a resolution they passed last year designating Carroll County a Second Amendment sanctuary county, playing on this sanctuary state and sanctuary county idea. They pulled together a meeting with about a couple of hundred citizens, the Board of Commissioners, uh, the, the, the Sheriff, and the State's Attorney. And they said this Senate Bill 281, which is a gun grab bill in Maryland, passed in Maryland uh, a couple of years ago, they said this bill does not apply in Carroll County, Maryland, because in Carroll County, Maryland, we recognize that it is pretended legislation because it violates the Second Amendment and it violates Article 6 of the, of the uh, Maryland Constitution. So they said, whereas the Second Amendment was adopted in 1791, blah, 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 da, 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 whereas the Supreme Court, whereas the Supreme Court, they quoted Supreme Court cases, I wouldn't have done that, uh, whereas the Maryland General Assembly has enacted the Maryland Firearm Safety Act of 2013, MF. SA, which bans the sale of 45 types of ordinary rifles and magazines that could contribute to the common defense. They go on, whereas the board reasonably believes that the, that the, that act or that pretended legislation violates the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, um, and whereas the board proclaims its opposition to it, and whereas the board took an oath to support the now therefore be it resolved to protect our citizens' constitutional right that Carroll County, Maryland is here in declared a Second Amendment sanctuary county as follows. And they said... Uh, well, excuse me, the, I didn't put all the slides in, but on your table is a disc, which actually is a disc of that meeting. It's a DVD. Please take that with you and watch it. Um, and uh, th th it comes in a couple different forms. It's packaged a couple different ways, but it's all the same thing, okay? Um, but that is the resolution that they passed, and it's the actual DVD of the session that they held. They had their local sheriff there saying... I'm not going to arrest anybody under Senate Bill 281, under this Firearm Safety Act. They had their local state's attorney there who said, I'm not going to prosecute anybody under this. Part of their resolution was, part of their resolution was, we're not going to use any county uh, resources. You can't hold anybody in a county detention center. You can't, we're not going to use any cars, trucks, whatever. You're not going to use any county offices or office buildings to enforce this pretended legislation. So I want you to know that this is possible. Um, let me tell you that um, IOTC, I lost the slide here, but Institute on the Constitution, as uh, Chief Kirk said, is dedicated to preparing courses of instruction that sheriffs and uh, police departments, peace officers, can use to educate their, uh, their, their officers, and their sheriffs and their deputies so that they will understand what law is and what is not what those things which are law and those things which are pretended legislation so that we can recover the American Constitutional Republic and so we can stop this long habit that we have of not thinking these things to be wrong when they are. Thank you very much. P uh, please take up. You also have, you also have their uh, uh, my the PowerPoints, which you are uh, free to take with you, and I hope I didn't go over my time. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. This is former Sheriff Richard Mack. Thank you so much for watching these timely speakers documenting solutions for modern day heroes. This movement cannot be successful without the support of the American people. That's where you come in. These conference videos prove that the work we are doing is absolutely making a difference. It is the solution. Donate today at CSPOA.org. Become a member of the CSPOA and strengthen our voice and stand with us for peace and liberty.